Alright, in this video, we're going to use Microsoft Excel to make a graph. Now, I posted on Blackboard for you all a document that explains how to use Excel to make scientific type graphs. It also includes step-by-step -step instructions with screenshots. But I've got a number of requests to make a video of this, so that's what we're going to do in this video. And in particular, we're going to graph the free fall data from the Spark Timer apparatus. All right, so the first thing we do is we open up the Excel spreadsheet, which I have here. And I notice in this little box up here, it says general. So if I click the down arrow there, I see we can have no specific format is general. That's the default. We can choose number, currency, accounting, etc. We want number, but first of all, we have to highlight the cells we're going to use. So I just click in a cell and drag and just highlight a big block of cells. It doesn't matter how many as long as I get enough cells to fill in my data. And then I change from general to number. So I'm telling Excel that I'm entering numbers. If you don't do that and you add or add a type in a number in fraction format, it'll think it's a date and change it to something else. We want to tell Excel that these are all numbers. All right, so we're going to plot velocity versus time for the free fall data. So the independent variable data always goes in the first column of the spreadsheet. So our independent variable it goes on the horizontal axis, and this is our time data. Now, we're not actually going to uh, publish the data, so we're just going to make the graph, so I don't need to put labels on here, but if you want to publish your data as well, you might want to put a label for time and velocity in the first cells. But since we're not publishing the data, we're just going to go ahead and enter it. So I can enter my data in fraction form. The, the Dots on the spark timer, of course, occur every 1 60th of a second. So the first dot is going to be 1 60th, so 1 slash 60, and then enter. And then next one, a 2 slash 60, enter. Now, for the time data, it increases by 1 60th of a second every time. So I can just highlight these first two cells. And there's a little tiny square in the lower right and I move the cursor there until I get the plus symbol and then I can just click and drag down and it automatically fills in my time. So it just repeats the pattern from the first two cells. So I don't have to type in every number. Now my velocity data of course is the dependent variable that goes in the second column. Now these don't increase by the same amount every time so I have to actually type in these numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and enter those now. I've got my sheet with all the data in it here. So the first one is 78, then the next one, 93. And notice it automatically gives me two decimal places. That's just the display. It will actually calculate whatever you type in, but it just displays uh, two decimal places for the default on number. So the third one then is 112. The next one is 130.5. The next one is 144, the next one 162, the next one 178.29, the next one is 195, the next one 211.33, the next one is 228, the next one 243.82, and then I have 260.5, and then I have 277.85, and I have 293.57, and then I have 309.2. Now I'm not going to worry about significant figures right now, significant digits will round to the three significant digits at the end. All right, so now I have all my data entered, and so I want to highlight the data. So I go to the first cell, click and drag till I have all the data highlighted. Now to make the graph, we go up to the top and we select the Insert tab. And then over here, we have the Chart Wizard. And so I click on the, I want the XY Scatter 
with no line. So I'll click that and I get scatter plots and I don't want any lines so I click this one in the upper left. And now here is my chart except for I just have a small chart that's pasted right into my spreadsheet. I want to move the chart to a separate sheet and so in the upper right here we have the move chart button so I click the move chart button and we want it in a new sheet. So I select the radio button for new sheet and then OK. And now I have a separate sheet for my graph. Now the default is put it in landscape format. We want to put it in portrait. So I go up to page layout and I choose the orientation and change that to portrait. We want to make sure we do that first because if you enter in all your labels and everything and then change it, many times it will change the font sizes when it switches from landscape to portrait. So we do that first. Now it looks kind of small, so to see it better we can just go up to view and select 100%. And now we've got our chart. Okay. Alright, so we go click on the design tab and then over in the upper left we have the chart elements. We can add the chart elements. The first thing we're going to do is put in our chart title. So click chart element and I put chart title and above the chart and then this is the where you enter in our chart title. All right, now the graph title should always be what's on the vertical axis versus what's on the horizontal axis and a subject. So we're going to have velocity versus time and our subject is free fall. So we want velocity versus time for free all enter. All right. Now I want to make sure that this is big enough. Even though it looks big on the screen, I want the title to be 14 point. So there are two ways we can change the font size. We can either go to the Home tab. If I click the Home tab, and I've got the font type, and the size is 14. Well, 14 is what I want, so we're okay. All right. So now I'll go back to the Design tab, and now we go back, we want to put labels on our axes, so chart elements, and we put axis titles. So the first one we'll choose primary horizontal, and the horizontal axis title is going to be time, so time, and we need a unit, it's seconds, but we'll just abbreviate it and put it in parentheses. So I put a parenthesis and an S for seconds and close parentheses. So time with an S in parentheses after and then enter and then I check and here's my label at the bottom now this one usually comes out too small so we could, again we could go to the home tab and change the font size or you just put the cursor down here so you into the little box and you right click and then you select font and then I can change this to 12 point so I want the title to be 12 point so that makes it easier to see when you print out your graph now we want to add the vertical axis title, so we go back to chart element, axis titles, vertical axis, and a vertical axis of course is velocity, and we need the unit at centimeters per second, so we do cm slash s, close parenthesis, oh I got an s there. And again we want to change the font size, so font We'll make this 12 point. All right, so now we've got our graph title. We got the axis labels. All right, now the next thing I notice, our first data point doesn't start until 70 something, right? And but our graph starts at zero, so we've got a lot of empty space at the bottom. What we can do is start it at 50. So to do that, I just double click on the vertical axis and then it opens this window. So our minimum, instead of starting at zero, we'll change that to 50. And then select Enter. And it readjusted the graph now. So now we start at 50. So our data fills the page a little better. OK? All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we want to uh, put in the minor axis grid lines. We only have the major axis grid lines. So just click on the chart body. Then it'll open up. Of the chart tools we click design 
and then we go over to add chart element select grid lines the major axis grid lines are already highlighted we want to add the minor grid lines you have to click that twice one for vertical one for horizontal so now we've got all the grid lines okay so our graph is starting to look pretty good now now the next thing we want to do is we want to add in the trend line and get the slope so we go to a data point and when we're on the data point we get this little box that says series and gives you the values for that data point so we just get that right click and get this window and we add trend line so choose add trend line and then over here the default is linear and we can see of course our data is linear if we were graphing distance versus time of course that would be a parabola and so in that case we would choose polynomial if we were making a graph like that but since this is a linear graph it's it's obvious that our data is linear we want a linear trend line so we don't choose linear trend line if your data is obviously not linear but we are linear so we choose that and then scroll down to the bottom and we check the box here display equation on chart so we can see the slope so check that box and then I go over here and we have an equation of the line okay it's very small though so I'm gonna click and drag that down to this near the center and we're gonna change this from 9 to 12 point so that makes it bigger okay all right, now notice it says Y and X for the variables. That's the default. We, we're not plotting Y versus X. We're plotting velocity versus time. Now this is just text, so we can just edit it. So I just move my cursor over here and change the Y to a V. And then go over here and change the X to a small T for time. So now I've got V and T for my variables. Another thing we can do, we've got... 993.34 we can round this to three significant digits or four significant digits whatever is called for so we're going to use three so i can just backspace here and get 993 from my slope this other number here the intercept number we don't really care about that but of course we'll just make that three digits anyway but we're not using that number so i'm not concerned with that one all right, the next thing I want to do is I want to highlight this equation because we're really interested in that slope. So what we can do over here to the labels options, you click on the paint bucket and on a border, we're going to put in a solid line border and choose the color as black. So now I've got a black border. And then I also want to choose the fill and I'm going to make a solid fill and notice I put in a colored fill in there we don't want that color we want to put white so let's go to the little paint bucket down here and choose white background so that puts a white background in my box what that white background does is it prevents the grid lines from showing through and in interfering with the equation of the line All right so now we have our graph we've got the title the axis labels with units We've got our line and we've got the equation of the line and shows the slope of 993. Now again, this is free fault data. So this is 993 centimeters per second per second, which is the acceleration for free fall. And then of course the accepted value for the acceleration due to gravity is 980. So we're pretty close to 980 for our experimental value. So everything worked out well. All right, so some other things that we could do, we could be finished just like this because we have a nice looking graph with all the labels and grid lines and the equation of the line showing the slope. Now, notice our line is dotted. If we want to make that solid, we can click on the line and go over here and <clears throat> for our line, the dash type we can change that to a solid line and if we want we can make it black so it stands out better another thing we want to do if we really want to highlight our data points move the cursor to one of the data points and click on it 
You gotta get in the right spot. There. Now once you highlight the data points, now we can go over here and choose marker. And in the marker options, we can <clears throat> make it larger. So the default is five. We can make that up to say eight. It makes the dots a little larger. And again, we could change the color if we want. So under marker, we could make this uh, solid fill and make them black. So they show up better. Right, so we can see the dots better. Right. Now, it's not absolutely necessary to do that, but if we want to make our graph a little prettier, we can do that. All right, so now we're finished. We've got the, the title, we've got our axis labels, we've got our line, and you see the data fits with the line pretty well, and we've got our slope, and everything turned out well. So if we need a hard copy of this, we can go ahead and print out the graph and attach it to your lab report. All right, so that's how you use Excel to make scientific type graphs.